Hello guys, this video I'm going to give an overview of my Plasticity Modeling course. So I'll just show you what it has to offer. Currently the course has over 42 hours of content for a very low price. So I think it's a very good deal. And I think if you want to get a head start in Plasticity, this is a very good course. So I'm just going to take you through a rundown. So we have currently four sections. We have the first one, which is the Plasticity Tree Cutter Mech. So in the first video, we have references. Well, I'm pretty much going to tell you about my, my goal for this, for at least the first section here, is I want to make a, a robot inspired by an Avatar, the Avatar amp suit, as well as real life tree cutting mechs right here. So various pieces of concept are there like as well, like this one by Christoph Luzny. So I just like a lot of the shapes and colors used here. So, you know, I like various uh, sci-fi works here. This one right here. And of course the avatar mech suit right there. In video two, we have the intro to plasticity where I'll show you all the basics of working with plasticity. And I can quickly uh, use the Boolean system and other tools here. And I should note guys that I like to put all of my resources in the first, under the first video resources right here. So simply open that up. You'll have the key map I use, the actual plasticity files, the IGS files for the man, for example. So if you just want to start making some sort of cyborg, you can just get that body into plasticity. So plasticity, dot plasticity is the actual format that plasticity uses, whereas IGS I found to be the best format to import into plasticity. So we have the cyborg ninja, we have uh, tranquilizer, dark energy blade, uh, police robot, spider drone. So all of the project files will be under the first video right here, the resources. I just have to keep them all in a single part right here. Next we have using Purev. So here I show you how you can use the program Purev for quickly dragging your reference images in there and some, some basic hotkeys you can use to control that program. After that we have the start of the project. We have the block out, refining, kit bash, arms, hydraulic cylinders, legs, detailing. Now there's still a there's still maybe a couple more videos I want to add to this. It's not completely finished yet, but it will be very soon. Maybe uh, in a few days, I will upload the last parts as well. All right, next, the next project, we have just a section called more projects. So we have uh, detailing plasticity, where I show you how you can create your own custom detail meshes, and how you can kind of plug them into your mesh and use them to quickly add details to your objects. We have this uh, basic uh, sci-fi hard drive. Sometimes, guys, you just want to do a fun little warm-up exercise. A lot of these videos, guys, are just warm-ups that I think, well, you know, let me, let me add them to the course as well, because sometimes you just have this quick thing you want to make, and I think it's a very good addition to the course as well. And the videos are all 1080p. Uh, Plasticity used to have an issue, or I should say Udemy used to have an issue where it could not properly handle 1080p, but now 1080p works for all videos. So as you can see, I'm using a real life reference image just to model my own kind of sci-fi hard drive right here. We have uh, an SMG here. So I may still want to finish this up, but even if the video is not finished guys, it's still just a good process on how you can work with plasticity and kind of how you can think about designing various things. Next we have this alien helmet right here, which mostly is an exercise in creating um, kind of more freeform shapes with plasticity. So, you know, boldly combining various uh, shapes like this to form some cool designs. So this is not like the best design I've ever done, but I just wanted to show you how you can combine various things together. And just take advantage of plasticity's powerful filler system as well. Next we have the dark energy blade which is this uh, sci-fi fantasy looking weapon. Once again, this is just letting your mind flow and just, you know, creating some crazy details here. So just have fun, you know, creating your own uh, weapon and, uh, you know, your own sci-fi medieval weapon and just, you know, have fun adding details. Sometimes it's fun and education to go a little bit crazy with designs. So for example, this may be a little bit overboard with detailing and colors, but Sometimes it's, it's, it's fun to just go all out and see what you can do. Next we have this uh, spider drone. 
It's also just fun to experiment with some more freeform designs here. Some uh, mechanical insects and things like that. This is partially inspired by that one enemy from Titanfall 2, the um, that exploding robotic tick enemy that just runs up to you and self-destructs. Next we have this uh, police robot. Essentially is this uh, mechanized robotic infantry inspired by this concept art right here. But whenever I use a concept art guys, I always uh, I always just use it as a basic reference. I don't try to, you know, get anything exact. And I also show you how I can pose uh, the fingers around the gun. So you can use uh, plasticity for posing some mechanical pieces as well. Next we have uh, E123 Omega. You know, I, I like to look at various franchises and draw inspiration from them. So I've always liked the, uh, the way the robots looked in Sonic. Uh, the animal and insect uh, inspired robots as well as these more recent ones So I think this is an exercise in like some more stylized exaggerated mechanical modeling Now because there's different there's different genres and styles of, of design some are trying to be very you know near future type of things and some try to be very cartoony over the top so I don't like to limit myself to anyone. I just like to do a little bit of dabble and all of them a little bit so this is like for more exaggerated legs and arms and things like that. Next section of the Cyborg Ninja, based on the Cyborg Ninja from Metal Gear Solid. Um, this first video here is just showing you the the workflow behind this. So what I essentially show you is how you can that that man who you can find once again under the resources file. He's right here. This uh, man body IGES file. So essentially this is just a regular man which you can then kind of use to create a cyborg which creates some armor right here. So as you can see, uh, plasticity in CAD in general is just very good for nice, super clean, accurate designing right here. You can see how I was able to take a part of that man's back and neck right here and just start creating some fun designs here guys. So you know, all of this I think would be much more complex, complicated with polygons or with zebra sculpting. With plasticity you just get such nice crisp results so guys people always ask me why do you why don't you just use this program why don't you just use that program and the answer guys is very simple I think that different programs and different modeling styles are all fun to use and I use them for different purposes I like to use ZBrush for general sculpting but I then like to go into Max or Blender or CAD plasticity and do these kinds of nice crisp designs because I think I'm just Number one, I'm better at it in those programs than I am with ZBrush, but I just think that in terms of cleanliness, ZBrush can get very messy very quickly and just you know go up to millions and billions of polygons, whereas with polygons or CAD, it, it's just, it stays clean, yeah, easy to work with, and uh, very easily editable. You know, and with ZBrush, I just spend a lot of time, you know, H polish and clean up, and it always looks a little bit lumpy, whereas with CAD, it's just uh, nice, crisp, crisp results. So I definitely think there's a lot of power in starting off with ZBrush, for example, to get your basic shapes in there, or maybe starting off the polygons to get your basic shapes, and then going into uh, plasticity and getting those nice clean designs. So here I show you how you can, for example, extract a part of this organic mesh right here. As you can see, it starts out very simple, and then you can start to chamfer and fill up this. And as you can see, you just increase in details until you get a very nice complex design. So this all starts with that same male body mesh right there. As you can see, it just yeah, it quickly ramps up in uh, complexity and you get some very nice designs going there. And so I just love plasticity's features of being able to just cut off. You can see I positioned uh, this oval right here. And then, you know, using plasticity's features, I'm able to easily cut off what I don't want and you get this really nice detail right here. I also briefly show you uh, this free tool, Export IGES, which is a, a free download on Gumroad right here. And that's a nice little add-on from Blender, which allows you to take a mesh from Blender and export that into the IGES format. And then you can then use that in plasticity. So definitely uh, be sure to check this out. Even if you don't want to do the Cyborg Ninja course, 
you should at least check out the first video so you can see how to use this free add-on right here. And you can also use uh, Moai as well. I think Moai does give better results, but if you want something for free, you get this uh, nice Blender add-on. This is what I mean, guys, is that I would use uh, Blender or ZBrush or Max uh, to do some sculpting and to get this kind of mesh right here. You know, because this will be much harder to do with CAD because you have to spend a lot of time setting up like all these complicated curves. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's just, you know, there's no real need for it when you can just do it much easier with a sculpting program. So you can start off in Blender or Max or ZBrush to get this, then just export it. And then you have a mesh ready to go in, a, in plasticity. So here it is. So then the Cyborg Ninja, you know, starts off very humbly where essentially I just have a uh, very basic mesh right here. I've got some reference images here. Always good to have reference images here. I'm using uh, Raiden for Metal Gear, Solid 4, and Gray Fox, Cyborg Ninja as well. And you can see, I just start to use uh, some basic features here and cutting out some nice shapes. And then when we get to uh, part 13, you can start to see how much more complex it looks. So like, you know, these really nice slick details are just uh, effortless to do with CAD. So I prefer to do this in CAD as opposed to polygons or ZBrush. And this is all very easily editable. I can just select the face here, delete it, and it's gone. So it's very uh, non-destructive as well. All right, and the last section, which may get some more videos, is the Perfect Dark Remix. So Perfect Dark is one of the games that really got me interested in design. So, for example, always liked some of the weapons from it. So I always like the tranquilizer gun. You know, I'm not 100% happy with this design. I kind of rushed it. But, you know, even if you're not perfectly happy, guys, everything you do is always uh, an improvement and exercise in improving. So you should never consider it to be a waste of time. You're always improving as you practice. And then I make the TMP as well. Tactical machine pistol. Even the data dying logo right here. All right, guys. So that is the course so far. Over two, 42 hours of videos, and it's only going to keep growing. So that is the first link in the description. So be sure to check that out. Thank you for watching, and take care.